So this clip that I've got is Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she's on Steve Bannon's War Room podcast. And the thing that's funny about it is the detachment from reality. So they're sitting there, they're calling Trump President Trump, right, like he never left office. And then she's sitting in this big chair that looks like something out of Disney, out of a Disney movie, like she's the ice queen or something like that. And then they go on about what is the problem with Republicans, how they're trying to strategize. What can we do? What, what's wrong with the Republican Party, folks? And it's nothing but humorous when you hear them try to figure it out. <laughs> and they're so far off the mark. We're just going to play along and see where it goes. Frustrated with this Congress, with no action, all talk. You have the President of the United States, President Trump, who's the leader of our movement. He's frustrated, angry, but don't know, doesn't understand what's happening, thinks he's being tapped along. And we have firebrands like yourself and others. What else do we need? I, I'm kind of missing. You've got a bunch of weak-willed, uh, and I don't want to say that the chairman of your subcommittee yesterday fits in that thing, but, you know, that was a pathetic. Him defending Fauci all day and kissing Fauci's yeah. ass was just mm -hmm. a, a pathetic where you brought the heat. One of the few who brought the heat, the rest of it was kind of, it was kind of, uh, you know, um, like a beach ball on a on a uh, on a sunny day. It was ridiculous. What the hell's a beach ball on a sunny day, folks? I don't get that. So, what's the problem and what's the solution about getting somebody fired off the football? And you're absolutely correct. We're losing this republic, and people know it. <laughs> That's right, Steve. Well, it's you know, it's 2017 all over again, and Steve, you know this really well. Um, it, you know, just like when President Trump first entered the White House, and then next thing you know, Jeff Session washes his hands of Russian collusion, and all of a sudden there's a Robert Mueller special counsel set up, and the Mueller investigation happens, and Republicans all set back and were like, whoa, well, you know, we, we can't get involved, which was insanity. I mean, that's why many people didn't even want to vote for Republicans again in the midterms in 2018. They're sick of it. And now. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are sick of it. And the main thing is, folks, they only passed, Republicans only passed three pieces of legislation the Limit Save Grow Act of 2023, which nullifies student loan forgiveness and tried to kill tax credits for electric vehicles, clean electricity, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, let's all get behind that. That sounds like really something grand. And then you've got the Secure the Border Act of 2023, which was, of course, build the wall. And then roll back safeguards for migrant kids. Yeah, that's um, that's fantastic. And then they've got uh, the Parents' Bill of Rights, which is something like a prelude to book burning. You know that uh, they just wanted to continue on. So it's it's like what what you see on Fox News. All of that, you know, crazy stuff that you see on Fox News. You know, the electric vehicles, and you know, we gotta we gotta stop this before you know they they take them, and all this kind of stuff. So I mean, that's what they've been busy doing. No wonder Americans don't like Republicans right now, Marjorie Taylor Greene. That's that's why. We have Republicans in Washington. You know, it's all over again. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's President Trump and it's President Trump. But mm -hmm. what they don't realize is, no, it's not President Trump. It's our policies. It's the fact that we're unapologetically America first. And it's President Trump this time, right now, but in the future, it's it's going to be someone else because this country has turned a corner, Steve, and it's not going back. And the Democrats have gone full blown dictatorship, full blown authoritarianism. They have totally perverted our justice system completely. It's it's being used and abused all for political reasons and in order. You know, folks, what they don't get is this. Why don't they get a candidate that can operate like most Americans, outside the judicial system? Why do they have to find someone that's constantly sitting in the court system right now? And, for example, you just had, you know, they're so excited that this trial in Georgia, the Find the Votes trial with Fonnie Willis, just got delayed by an appellate court. They're, they're so happy. Charlie Kirk came out and said, you know, this is fantastic. It's a win. It's a win. Well, why would you care if the man's got nothing to hide? I mean, really, think about it. If you're president, as you refer to him like he's never left office. If he's got nothing to hide, then why wouldn't you want him to go through the trial and come out victorious? Because he's got something to hide. To win the election 
in 2024. And Republicans are up here still saying, well, we're the party of law and order. Guess what? Law and order is gone out the window. That's what America knows. But yet here we have Republicans up here, you know, sitting there going, well, we're going to use our appropriations process, an appropriations process that is useless unless we have a Speaker of the House that is willing to walk you, in you, the room you, and say, you, you want to know you, something, everybody? No, hey, he's, hey, guys. He's, he's, John, John, yeah. Bain, John Boehner's his mentor is Axios. That's right. Real quickly, John Boehner are, are, are you, what, what probability as you see it now on the 4th of June, ma'am, uh, will we be shutting down the government at midnight on the 30th of September uh, in a couple of months? I, I, I have no idea. I mean, we're, we're going to have to literally have an exorcism of Mike Johnson and get the demons out of him so that he can think clearly again. I'll have you know that Mike Johnson is a Christian. And, and stand up to Hakeem Jeffries and stand mm. up to Chuck Schumer and tell, tell Joe Biden to go kiss his ass. I mean, this is, we, we need a complete change of mindset in Republicans in Washington, D.C., and I didn't see it today. I have we do. not seen it. Nobody seems to. Yeah, that's the funny part is we do need a total change of mindset, but we're thinking about two different things here. I mean, you're losing strategy. The only thing that she can come up with right now, folks, as far as what can they do going forward is to defund the government. I mean, that's all they got. Seriously, I, just defund the government. That's that's all they have. The message. And I'm ready for everyone I work with to get the message. Instead of saying that I'm the one, oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, mm -hmm. there she goes again. There she Guess goes. what? This is the whole reason why most members of Congress, most Republicans, don't do in-person town halls in their district. You want to know why they always do them on the <laughs> exactly. phone? Because exactly. people show up exactly. and they're pissed off. And you want to know something? <laughs> yep. I'm one of those people. I just happen to win an election. And so <laughs> That's the problem. They can't even go to their town halls in person because people are pissed off. Check the box. You're right there. And folks, it's, it's like she doesn't get it. And as I said, their only solution is to defund the government on the heels of these three crappy pieces of legislation. That's all they've gotten been able to do. That's all they've gotten done. I mean, it's sad. It really is. And they're sitting there fecklessly trying to figure out what the problem is, and they can't see it. It's right in front of the, their faces. They are the problem.